All right, my name is uh, John Gibble. I'm with Informatica. And for this next session, I'm gonna be walking you through the equivalent of the workflow manager and the monitoring capabilities in our, in our cloud data integration uh, platform. So essentially, right, the, the workflow manager and the monitoring, they, do, they perform the orchestration and they give you then visibility into at runtime and after, you know, what's ran and what executed row count um, information like that. What I want to do just before I kind of drill deeps into um, the component does the orchestration is just to make sure you understand the assets within our cloud platform that it's or that, that's being orchestrated and what those equivalents were in Power Center. So you, in Power Center, you have a mapping in cloud data integration, you have a mapping in Power Center, you have a session and essentially the equivalent is a mapping task. So that the mapping task is really, you know, what's being orchestrated within our cloud data in integration platform. So the component that does that orchestration is what referred to as a task flow. So the task flow is really the equivalent of a power center workflow. And so for today, what I'm gonna do is just kind of walk you through real quick how to create a new task flow, where it is you know, within the user experience. I'll then kind of drill down so you, you know, understand what tasks are in our cloud platform that you know, were present in, in the workflow um, manager as well as you know additional tasks that we've added for some for new types of functionality and then lastly i'll just give you some understanding of how you can run it and how you can view um, the results so let's go over into our, our data integration um, like i said you just want to create a new asset here's your task flow you're going to see there's a lot of different options to get started with just you know pick task flow these are some wizards and you can ignore that top option so i just hit you know create um, it'll create the palette very similar, you know, to, to like a mapping. So you have your tasks over here on the left. Here's your palette. If you select something in the palette, you know, just like uh, a mapping, you know, you have your different fields and properties that you can feel down here. So for example, if you want to, you know, pass in parameters, or we refer to them as input fields, very similar to, again, how uh, parameters are handled in Workflow Manager. And then you have um, the different tasks that are over here. So for example, you know, to add a task to the task flow, it's just a matter of dragging it. So you have assignment tasks, you have notification tasks, and these are all, you know, types of tasks that you would be familiar with, um, you know, from the, the, um, uh, from the, from the workflow manager that you can add. If you want to actually run, um, for example, a mapping task, it's just a matter of, you know, dropping what we refer to as a data task onto the, uh, onto the mapping task. And then down below here is where you would actually select, um, for example, the map mapping task that you wanna run. We do have um, you know, the ability to create decisions. So if you need to create, for example, conditional logic, um, we enable you to do that. And then in addition to that, there's a few other things that you can do. So for example, um, we have a concept of a jump task that is unique to our cloud platform. So let's say that you're you know, executing a task and you want it to return back, for example, on a particular condition to decision one, um, you can do that. So this kind of enables looping, which is something you know, people have been asking for a long time within the workflow manager. And then also to kind of get away from the worklets, we have this concept of a subtask. So you can essentially run any other task flow um, within this task flow, so that really promotes um, reusability. So pretty straightforward, you know, visual environment, you know, all of the same tasks you're familiar with Workflow Manager, plus we've added some new additional ones. Um, once you have your, your task flow created and it's valid, um, different ways that you can run it. One way that you can execute it is that we do expose uh, a service URL. So truly a cloud platform, so you can service URL. Um, so if you want to call from a REST API, then you have a SOAP service call as well that you can execute it. or when you're in the task flow, there's a run button up here and you just simply hit run and it'll go ahead and execute it. Once it gets run, um, we, you know, we keep ta uh, track of everything that's occurring. So I can go over, for example, to my jobs here, and this will list out all the different task flows that have been run. This is when we we're just looking at, we can see last time I was run a successful, it's got three subtasks that it orchestrated. We can see each of those successful number of rows process, for example. And then if you want to drill in, it's kind of just to complete the picture down below, you know, it's success rows errors. 
as well as the, the the session log, which if you want it, you know, the details of the session log, it's just a matter of uh, downloading it. So again, you know, all of the, the same core functionality that you're familiar with in Workflow Manager will be available in our cloud native. Plus we've added some additional tasks uh, to kind of streamline and make uh, some tasks easier. Plus you have, you know, for example, it's a true uh, cloud native platform. You have, you have the ability you can call it, for example, from, from a REST API. Um, thank you very much and hope you enjoy the, the rest of the sessions.